Welcome to Fish and Magician TV with Dave Graybill. Brought to you by Hooked on Toys, Lyle's Boats, Grand Cooley Dam Area Chamber of Commerce, Cooley Playland, Bob File Boats and Motors, and Gaboon Productions. fishing time at Banks Lake pre-spawn walleye and it has been a good one this year. Austin Mosier, Austin's Northwest Adventures, when did you start fishing walleye here this spring? Uh, we started, uh, it's been almost a month ago and yeah. uh, you know I came came right over the hill from the kokanee fishing to, uh, to start doing some of this walleye fishing and it's been really good. Right, so we're at April 1st, April Fool's Day. <laughs> And so you started in early March, and that's early for Banks Lake. But this year, the pre-spawn fishing has been great. Yeah, it's been really good. We've been uh, we've been limiting the boat um, almost every day. Not every day, but we've been getting really close. You know, yeah. 20, 24 fish to thirty-two fish a day is pretty it's good just fishing. Terrific, you know, and. I had never thought about fishing banks like that early, you know, because this is a big impoundment, it's cold. We had really what's a normal winter for us here this past year. So we had some cold weather, lots of snow, and so this pattern should be fairly consistent. But, you know, I haven't had a lot of experience with the early spawn, pre-spawn fishing, but boy, you got it dialed in this year. We had a couple of terrific trips in March. Yeah, yeah, it's been really good. Uh, guys are guys are doing really well out here. We, they changed the limit this year to uh, eight fish. It's a statewide limit over 12 inches and one over 22. And uh, there's been a lot of guys out here limiting. It's it's been oh, a great fishery. So I think that rule change is going to have a really good impact on this fishery as well. We're going to get rid of some of those uh, overly abundant juveniles. It'll cut down on the amount of uh, forage that they take. We're going to see bigger fish. I think it's going to be a positive result, as we saw when they applied that to Moses Lake and Potholes. Yeah. But I'll tell you what, we're going to be showing you today what pre-spawn walleye fishing can be on Banks Lake. I can't wait to get out in the water and do some of that. It's almost time. Here we go, right? <laughs> Like a 
like a nice wall, huh? Decided, well, let's just run down to Barker see if there's any fish down there. I don't think that hit bottom more than a minute. And there's a nice walleye right there. <laughs> that good old uh, Dutch fork blade on uh, slow death hook, Austin. Remember how that worked earlier? Yeah, that's and a good it's one. Good today, too. All right. Whoa, -ho! back side of that island. Austin just said, hey, you know, that looks good over there. I don't think I've ever fished there, but it looks good. What do you know? And he went up one way and then turned and there he is. Fish in the net. Another little eater. Yep. Nothing wrong with that. We're just doing our bit for the management of this watershed. <laughs> oh. Got that blue blade in his mouth again. Look at that. Oh, All right. <laughs> Duck him. I never got big. He must have been just ball on it. Not really my favorite one. Go ahead. Master shows how it's done. Uh, I don't know about that. <laughs> I'm usually on the other end of it, doing the net. I'm usually on the other end. Wait till you see how I knock him off with this <laughs> net. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Good. See, that's like they were the other day, light biters, but you get them. Oh, look at that. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Hey. Got him. That's a better fish. We yeah. got a good one this time. Nice fish. The hook popped out and then oh, 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 hung up back there. Right there. Oh, that's a nice fish. Beauty. Whoop. Wow. Pretty good one. That's your uh, 18 inch fish, probably. Let's see what he made. 18 and a half. Beauty. Nice. That'd be a good eater there. three rods right there as we trolled through a school of fish and only got one to stick. It just got heavy all of a sudden. I wonder if we got ten minutes of perch, that's why. They got tangled in one of these other rods. Oh yeah. 
dinner. Ooh, that's a chunky perch. He's bad, yeah. right? Hey? I wonder, if, I wonder if that's what we just went through. I yeah, bet it was. With all of those little... A bunch of little perch. Yep. You guys wanting to keep perch today? Let it go. He's going to spawn. Bye-bye. <laughs> All of a sudden, this is going to kind of be the activity we were yeah. looking for. There he is. A little eater walleye. Yeah. Oh, look at that. That's one this of those, man. Yakima bait. Yakima bait. Yeah. Let's put that on. Yeah, the blue. They like that blue color for sure. Good deal. Oh, look at that. Still got our worm. Ha <laughs> ha. A twofer. Well, Dave, you said put a sandwich in your mouth and for sure you'll get a fish. The walleye and, he, <laughs> and I were eating at the same time. By golly, that's on that fake worm you put on. <laughs> I didn't want to have anything to do with that, but you grabbed it and put it on. And then look what happened. Go. Yeah. It did put a nice spin on that slow death hook. It sure does. It spins really well with that. Yeah. That's what they're made for. It's a walleye. Well, what do you know? They actually catch fish, don't they? Hey, hey, hey. Blue blade strikes again. Go for him, blue blade. Ooh, did you see that? The hook just fell out. Oh. Look how my weeds are on that. It's been dragging right on the bottom. That's great. I'm not getting hung up. That's another good one. Little eater. You bet. Oh, don't stop reeling for that. Got him? Yeah. <laughs> nee, 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 nee. <laughs> well, hand off. <laughs> what do they call it? What's that? The old trick play? <laughs> oh, the flea flicker. Flea flicker. <laughs> Is this the flea flicker? That's right. The Grandstrom flea flicker. Uh huh. There we go. Here he comes. Okay. Boom, another cookie cutter walleye. Yeah. We had a, uh, that's actually a little bit better one than the last one, but they're all pretty darn there good. Go. Yeah. Woo -hoo. Well, I tell you, this is a lot of fun. Walleye fishing, I have to admit, is one of the most rewarding things you can do when you learn how to catch them because they are definitely one of the most challenging fish that we have. You know, some days they're there and other days they're not. I mean, you can back to the same spot the next day and, you know, where'd they go? It's That's very typical of walleye fishing. Yeah, it definitely is, Dave. I, I got lots of marks on my uh, on my chart and, uh, you know, I'll, I'll have a few days in a row where it's real good on those marks. And then I'll come back, and, and they've moved over 10 feet. They've shallowed up a little bit, and and uh, they've 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 uh, they've switched what they like to eat, and it, it really changes. A little bit of a weather change, barometric pressure, whatever, phase of the moon. Yeah. They, and sometimes you just can't explain why they've just decided not to go on the bite, or holy cow, this is great. <laughs> right. And there's no explaining it, but. If someone wanted to really learn or refine their technique, let's talk a little bit, just start from the top and show us the rod and reel that you like to use when you're fishing for walleye here on Banks Lake or any lake here in central Washington. Okay, so so I use a, a nine foot three. This is a Cousins 903. It's a, a 10 to 25 pound line rating and a one to five ounce troll weight. Um, it's a really good rod as far as it doesn't have cork, so when you pull it out of the rod holders, you're not scarring it up all the time. And um, I've gone to all that style of stuff. 
Um, these Cousins rods are really good rods. They have a lot of eyes on here, so you get a nice bend in the rod, um, real soft action. You can see it kind of, you want a little bit of a soft tip, but with some backbone in the middle for these bottom walkers. Yeah. Um, and I also use a line counter reel. It's very important to me for a line counter is to have some repeatability when I, um, when we get a fish at a certain um, amount of line out, we can put that amount of line back out. And plus, once we get a fish, I can tell my customers or whoever's fishing with me that day to, okay, you're going to go back out to 90 feet. And then they know to put it at 90 feet because as you hit bottom and your, your troll speed continues, it's going to raise up. So you have to keep letting it down and letting it down until you get that sweet spot where it's just tapping the bottom. And exactly. that's what you want. Um, and that line counter just speeds everything up. Yep. Everybody knows where they're at. No more I, of this. Yeah. I can go around and I can look at all the rods and know if everybody's where they should be and yeah. and all that good stuff. It's uh, um, You know, I like these Fulby rod holders. They come out pretty easy. Uh, works well. Um, there's some other uh, products on the market that do the same thing. I think Scotty makes another one like it. And, yeah, the Orca. Uh, yeah, the Orcas. That's it. Yeah, just sort of a clamp around the, the rod button reel. Yeah. Really easy to use. Um, I found a lot of people prefer those because it's just a straight up, easy right. release, rather than having to lift the, the rod, pull it straight up out of the old style right. holders. Right, exactly. Yeah. Okay, now you talked about the rods and reels. Now, what pound test line do you prefer for typical walleye fishing? A uh, 10 pound test is, is a good good Plenty. size for that. Yeah. 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 I do a lot of braided line and then I'll, um, when I'm jigging and stuff like that, and I'll top shot with some mono on top of that. and. Uh, um, let's just, let's yeah. just cut that. I don't even need to talk about that. Sorry. Let's redo that. Sorry. Okay. Now we talked about the rods and reels. Now, what pound test do you prefer when you're walleye fishing? Um, I run a 10 pound mono. Um, mm -hmm. I run a, I run Iser line. It's a good line. Uh, 10 pound uh, platinum line. Uh, it's tough. Yep. Good for line abrasion. That's great. Style. And then uh, I run 15 pound fluorocarbon for the leaders that I hand tie. That's good. It's good stuff, and, and they're not going to be line shy with that fluorocarbon. I also noticed that on a lot of your reels, you have backed them almost full with a braid, because the braid lasts forever. Right. And you can put 30-pound braid that only has about a 20-pound test, or less than that, probably about a 10-pound test line diameter. Right. So you can put a lot on. And then I also noticed that a lot of people will take uh, when they attach their bottom walker, which we're going to talk about next, they attach it with their braid. So, because that's a 30 pound test. So, if right. they get hung up, they can get their bottom walkers back if they yep. get snagged. Now, a bottom walker is a real typical piece of, of walleye gear. You can see it's got a loop in the top, the fat parts, one, two, three, four ounces, sometimes less. And you see the wire loop at the top. This is what you attach your line to. And then this big swivel here, you can attach whatever kind of bait you're running behind that, whether it's a uh, slow death hook or a smile blade rig or, or whatever. And an alternative to this style are these that have just a wire loop at the top. And again, they come in various weights. And again, th these are intended to just help you keep in contact with the bottom. That's where the walleye are found. Then notice on the top of this is a removable swivel. It's not a swivel, excuse me, but a uh, um, clevis sort of a rig. And so your main line goes through that and you attach your leader to that. And then, you know, if you're changing locations, you're fishing deeper water, shallower water, it's very easy to unclip this and attach the appropriate size weight to it. Those can be really handy. Yep. I also like those for uh, colder water uh, presentations. I can huh? kind of feed it to the fish and they don't feel the weight of the bottom walker uh, Cause when they pick slider. it up. Yep, cause exactly. it's a slider. because it's on that slider. Perfect. Those work really well in the spring. Right, because your swivel will go on behind that. Yep. Now, let's talk about some of the different rigs. Uh, this is probably one of the most common that you'll see when you go to your local sporty goods store. What we've got on the top here 
is known as a smile blade. This is a Maxillor product. They're extremely popular with walleye and other fishers because walleye oftentimes you're slowing at one mile an hour or less and these will always spin at very slow speeds. Yeah. Coming next on this leader, these two items are called a pill. And what's the advantage of having a pill on the line? Well, the pill floats, they really help to keep your bait up off the bottom, especially if you're in a real snaggy area where it's uh, maybe some shale rock or, um, or uh, weedy type areas that uh, it, it will help to keep you from getting hung up and keep from knocking your worm off all the time on the bottom. Exactly, you know, with slow speeds, again, they're putting some weight on just with a worm. Yeah. And so, and some of the other style blades too are a little bit heavy. And that, at that speed you're going, they're going to be dragging right across the bottom. And again, that pill might you save you some gear yeah. as it floats off the bottom. And notice too, this has got a double hook rig, a worm, worm harness. And when you rig your night craw crawler to this setup, you put the tip of the nose right through the top hook. And then farther down, you put the second hook through so that the worm runs straight right behind your lure. And that's a very, very common, very popular presentation for walleye. Here's another uh, rig that has gained in popularity here in central Washington in the last few years called the slow death hook. And the whole key to this thing is if you see this hook, it has a really dramatic bend to it. And the idea of that is to create a spin in the water when you put a night crawler on that hook. And then above that, we have some beads just for spacing so that when the fish comes up to take the bait, He's not biting on the blade that's spaced above the hook aways. And in this case, what we're showing here is uh, one of the Dutch Fork Lures turtleback blades. And we've had really good success with these uh, in some different colors, like uh, I have one here that this season so far is starting out strong, but you never know when they're just gonna change their mind about this, but this is called their blue fire tiger turtleback and it's really been a good one hasn't it Austin yeah it's been working really well for the past week or so we've been yeah. doing good on it both rigged right on top of a slow death hook or with a worm harness and Austin why don't you show people how you rig say uh, a Berkeley worm which is an alternative to a night crawler and they've come out with a bait that is designed for slow death hooks and slow death presentations. You know, these, these, are, these are a great product. They look a lot like a worm, uh, like a night crawler. They're hollow. They have scent built into them. They have way more scent than a regular worm would have. And, uh, and they help when you have a lot of perch in the area um, to get them down without the perch uh, tearing the tails off. Uh -huh. And uh, with these slow death hooks, that's what happens a lot is you get the, the fish come up and they just grab the tail and you reel it up and you just got part of a worm there and, and you can see the hook but there's no tail anymore. So we have uh, started running these Berkeley gulp worms on these things and you just kind of rig them like this. You run it right up the middle. And these are actually hollow. They're hollow, yep. Yeah. And so they uh, will slide on there and I run them about three quarter of the way up and then you just poke them out the side like that slide it up over your knot and you got a good bend like that. When that runs just like, when you get it rigged just like that, it'll just rotate in the water like this. Yeah, why don't we dip that in the water? Maybe we can capture that on film and show people Yeah, that action, which is really important. If you're gonna run a slow death hook, you gotta have that action. Yeah, so that, that's the rig all, all rigged up. We do this a lot in the spring. Leader length. Um, this is probably a, a three and a half foot leader length. And uh, I like that length um, to keep it a little bit off the bottom, but, but real close to the bottom. And, uh, and, and running it like this, it should get a good roll out of it. 
and it works really well in the spring when the fish aren't real aggressive. As you can see, that worm is rotating like a corkscrew. And those fish really like that action. They make these in lots of different colors. They, you can get them in a lot brighter colors and stuff like that. I kind of like the natural color. It looks a lot like a, a real worm. Absolutely. And uh, I've had really good luck with these. Right. And as uh, Austin mentioned, these are already scented. But if you're using night crawlers, a lot of people do like to use scents when they're fishing for walleye. And one of my favorites is this craw anise. It's made by, uh, it's a Graybill's Guide Formula from Northwest Bait and Scent. But there's a lot of different ones that you can experiment and try. This just happens to be one of my favorites, but there's a lot of different scents available and you should experiment yep. with different styles. Yep, I use a lot of Procure scents and, and mm -hmm. I use some Graybill Guide scents. And, yep. and uh, I, I try to have a wide variety of tools in my toolbox at all times. There you go. Because you never know what the fish are really gonna want that day. Yeah. So. And in the early season, these techniques seem to be the predominant uh, ones that anglers will go to. Because particularly in the cold water situations, early pre-spawn, the fish aren't real aggressive. They're moving slow, they're in cold water. And so a presentation like this with a live bait or a really good imitation is what's going to do the best for you. Now later on, like in the summer, when the water temperatures come up, then you can get into crankbaits and other things like that, but that's a whole different show. We'll it have to do definitely that. is. Yes, <laughs> yes. But that gives people a good idea of from start to finish, rods and reels right down to what to put on the end of the hook on what you need to have in your toolbox, as Austin says, if you want to try walleye fishing, particularly in the early season. Good way to mark your fish once you get one hooked up at the waypoint. Yeah. This hasn't been a bad spot. Oh, I think it's a good spot. Here he comes. Hey! In the box. Nice. That's the best kind right there. The ones that are in the box. Yeah. That's <laughs> good. Well, looky there. It's the old Wonder Blade. Did it again. Boy, he swallowed it too. He didn't want to give it up either. <laughs> nice. Good job, Austin. Yeah, well, we're grinding them out, aren't we, Dave? Absolutely. Got back to your spot behind the island here. Run it to the surface. <laughs> Oh, look at that, it's a Yakima Bay Hilda Brant blade. Look at that, bright orange. That's almost scary looking. All that right. Scared that fish to death, huh? Yeah. Ooh. Nice. Yeah. Oh. Whoa, I'm sorry you just leave that out. Nice fish. Good 
on that triple hook setup. Yep. in more fish today than I have in a month. <laughs> Austin Mosier getting the walleye. Oh, looks like Eric needs to get the net. He'll be up here pretty quick. There he is. All right, well, we're getting a pretty good bite going here now. Come right out. Yeah, we're getting a bite. We just nice. Good job. Way to go, Eric. Nice fish. Got on that. Pulling pretty good, huh? Yeah. Holy moly. All of a sudden, we've had about four bites in ten minutes. There we go. Good yeah. job. Oh yeah, that's a fatter fish. Blue tiger from Dutch Fork. Does it again. Sweet. Beauty. <laughs> How you doing, Dave? <laughs> I'll be getting the net, Austin. <laughs> This is literally, what, four fish in oh. about a minute and a half. Yep. <coughs> Happening fast. Yeah. It's just like you guys were saying, when they decide, or when you run into a bunch that are well, hitting, they're... Ooh, Look at that. He there we go. Like he's done it before. <laughs> Roll reversal. Nice. That boiling snake is back there. <laughs> <laughs> wow. Tall <Small> tails. <laughs> yeah. This is uh, like fish number five in about five, six minutes here. I think Dave, Dave's got a big one of the day. Oh, is that the deal? Oh, it is a big one. It is a big one. Holy buckle. Oh, yeah. Ho, ho, ho. That's what we needed. Look at that. That's the one we were looking for. That's your one over 22, Dave. Yep. And you just drove right to them. This spot has been on fire. I think it's a big male. Yeah. Yep. You want to? Uh, are you gonna keep him? We can release this one yeah. if you want. It's up to you. We can measure him. Don't mess up. Yeah, I gotta figure out if it's. Yeah, I'm not his gills. Yeah, we can. Release that. Let me try this. That's a male. It's a big skinny male. We can keep it if you want to. Okay. That's a good fish. Want to measure? That'd be your one over twenty-four. 22, I mean. Yeah, we saw that one get hit, too. Yeah? Yep. Nice. Oh. Come on. No. Well, Dave, a lot of people would say that was a swing and a miss, but uh, <laughs> it's a little different with walleye, isn't it? Walleye can be so frustrating. You can see right now what I got back is just ahead of that trailing hook. How he missed that hook, I don't know. But you get a lot of baits back like that when you're walleye fishing. Mouths like surgeons. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Well, Austin, I tell you what, that's a way to spend a spring day pre-spawn walleye fishing. Man, it turned out to be gorgeous. And we actually found some good action. You know, at different times, you know, we started uh, here up by Cooley Playland and we moved out to Barker and even on Barker we had to move around a lot and I think that's indicative 
of these fish getting closer to the spawn. We're going through some temperature changes. You know, like today, what a day. I mean, it's like summer here and it's still early, early spring. Yep, it was a great day. Uh, it's real, a lot of sunshine today and the, the water warmed up to 45 degrees and, and those fish, they kind of, they were uh, a, a little bit uh, hard to get to bite there at first, but we, we got them, uh, we got them uh, to bite and, and well, played around with our presentations. And yeah, yeah, you know, and but the thing is, you have so much experience up here. You've got waypoints at different spots. You know the area over in Barker very well. Yeah. And if this spot isn't working, well, let's just move over here. We didn't have to run from one end of the lake to the other. There's just a lot of different places you can fish, even on Barker proper, which is actually a pretty big. Yeah. Yep. And so you managed to find good groups of fish. I mean, we got busy and it was really fun. And let's see, probably the winners today in terms of rigs, both on slow death and double hook rigs, worm harnesses. Still, we had a re some really good action with the Dutch fork. And, and again, that one particular blade, which is the Blue Tiger Turtleback. Yep. And then also, there late in the day, the bite really came on well for the Yakima bait, and I can't remember which style that was exactly. Yeah, it was the Walleye Elite, and, and it was in a blue color as well, so. That's right. They really like the blue colors up here, I think, on Banks Lake. Blue works good, even on a nice sunny day, or even when we've had heavy overcast when we've been up here yeah. earlier. It's, so. in, it's just a good color for this lake. Yep. Well, I sure appreciate you taking the time to show us you know, where to fish on banks for pre-spawn walleye and the techniques that you use. Very helpful. And we have the result right under our feet here. <laughs> yep. A nice live full, of, live well full of fat walleye. And so we're going to head to the dock, do some flaying and plan some great dinners. Oh yeah, it's going to be good. Thanks for watching Fish and Magician TV with Dave Graybill. Brought to you by Gaboon Productions, Bomb File Boats and Motors, Cooley Playland, Grand Cooley Dam Area Chamber of Commerce, Lyle's Boats, and Hooked on Toys.